Hi, this is Patricia from Hayes Sewing Machine Company. We are in Wilmington, Delaware, and today I'm going to show you how to very easily make a wine bottle bag. You can make this either on your serger or on your sewing machine. And we're going to be doing a little bit of a different technique because I'm going to show you how to do the burrito or hot dog method so that way your hem does not show on the inside. So that whole top looks pretty. We have also included ribbon so it's very easy to tie and then we're also going to show you how to make a little bottom so that it stands up nicely. Traditional wine bottles are about 13 inches tall so we have cut this strip to be about 11 inches and cut this one to be about 7 inches. You can make the hem a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller depending on how big your um, bottle is. And then for evening off the ends, I'm going to actually take my fabrics and I'm going to line them up and I'm going to keep my fold over here. And then I'm going to take my rotary cutter and we're going to cut a clean edge. You kind of want to look to get rid of all of the salvage edges. And I want to have the same size, so that's why I like to cut that part together. We're now going to open up our hem. And you want to have the right side showing up. We're going to take our main fabric and we're going to line up the main fabric so we're doing right sides together on this top row. And then we're going to take this wine fabric and we're going to just start rolling it up. And we're going to take the other part of our hem and we're going to fold it in half on top. So we actually have three pieces of fabric up at the top here that we are working with. And you can take either straight pins or clips. We want to make sure we have them all lined up together. So as we're stitching, we're not losing any pieces so we don't have gaps. And we're also not getting our extra fabric caught. So I'm going to line up the, my two ends first to get my pin in. And then I kind of do a little pinch and like a little walkie in with my fingers. And we're going to get that middle section. And then I'm going to do kind of each half again. And for this part, I do tend to use more pins or more clips because it will help keep the fabric from shifting. We do just want to make sure that we are pulling out the pins as we get to them. If you're doing this on your sewing machine or on your serger, do not stitch over them. Please do not stitch over them. <laughs> Pull them out. All right, and then we're going to do this quadrant. I have my serger set up for a regular four thread overcast. We're going to line up our first edge, kind of get that started and pull the pin out. I'm going to use my finger as a guide just so I can kind of keep everything going along smoothly. Some sergers do have seam guides that you can attach onto them. And as I'm serging, I'm using my other hand to kind of keep pushing the rolled up fabric that is inside our burrito kind of out of the way so I don't stitch over it. Once we have sewn the end, we have this really long tube. You're going to grab the inside fabric and we're going to start pulling this out. And it's going to look weird and it's going to be like, there's no way you can get it out, but you can. I'm kind of sticking my fingers in here as I go along. It helps me get a little bit of a grip on the fabric since we're working with a smaller tube. And then I can start kind of pulling this fabric as I go along. And it'll get to a point where you're almost like halfway, where you can also just start pulling the rest of that through. I will pinch this between my knees, and then you can also pull like this. 
and then I can pinch a little bit farther. All right, and we have that all the way through. So there is the top part and there is the inside. So you see we don't have the raw edge showing on the hem. We're gonna head over to our iron and we're gonna give this hem a nice press. We want it to be flat, so when we do the next steps, we don't have any bunching. So we're gonna iron kind of from the bottom of the hem going up. And we also want to iron the fold flat. going to also go to where that fold in my fabric was and I'm going to iron that flat. If you have a hard time getting that to come out nicely, use Mary Ellen's Best Press. It's a spray starch alternative and it does really get creases out of fabric wonderfully. So we have a nice flat length. I'm going to do just a rough measure to see how big my piece is that I cut. We're a little bit over 43, like 43 and a half. So we can get three bags out of this. So 43 and a half divided by three, 14 and a half inches. The math will range a little bit, and if it's off a tiny bit, really won't matter. So I'm going to measure out about 14 and a half. Actually, I'm going to do this the lazy way. I'm going to fold this in half. Oh, aren't you clever? And then I'm going to measure 14 and a half coming from this way. And we're going to cut. So I have two pieces there. And there is my third one. So we're going to be able to make three wine bags. So we have a nice pretty ribbon that matches with it. You could also use like twill tape, you could use decorative um, ribbons, whatever you like that goes with it. We're going to measure about a yard, so about 36 inches per bag. So since I can make three, we're going to go ahead and cut three. And then I'm going to take one of my bags, we're going to fold it in half. Now this part here is kind of the important part where I want things to line up. And that's also going to be where I insert my ribbon. So I'm going to fold it in half, pretty side in. And so my open side is out here, and my fold is right here. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to tuck this right in here and kind of keep all of that out of the way because we don't want to sew through that and line it up. I'm going to grab my pins or you can use your wonder clips and I'm going to put two pins right there because I really want that to be nice and sturdy and not to shift. We're going to put another pin here, and then we're going to put several pins in here, and then a couple on the bottom. We're going to head back over to our serger, and we're going to get that little piece started. And we're going to do this part first because that's the part that I really need to be kind of the cleanest, the best looking. And we're gonna pull out the pins as we get to them. doing the other side. So 
So I have my wine bottle bag surged, but I actually want to add some um, dimension to it because it's flat and a wine bottle is three dimensional. So in order for it to hold it and stand a little bit nicer, I'm going to add some dimension by cutting out little sections from the corners so that I can make it have a bottom. So I'm going to take my ruler and just a marking pencil and I'm going to measure a square basically one inch from the t uh, bottom one inch from the side and we're just going to mark this and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side I'm going to measure one inch from the bottom and one inch from the side you really don't need to do a very big space because remember when you're surging you're actually going to have some extra space there as well because we have the four thread overcast so it's going to add some more dimensionality so i'm just going to go in with my scissors and i am going to cut out that one inch that i marked from the inside and we're just literally going to cut it out from both sides I'm not worried about it being perfect because it's going to be the bottom of the bag nobody's going to really notice it I'm going to go to this side first because this is where I have my seam I'm going to open up the bag and I'm going to pinch the bottom part and the side together so that those two seams meet and I'm going to kind of flatten it out with my fingers and I'm going to grab my wonder clips I like them for this part it's just a little bit easier and I'm going to just put a clip in there just so it holds it so it doesn't shift now that I have that one done I'm going to flip it over to the other side now this side doesn't have a seam for me to meet up but that's also why I like to do that side first because that kind of flattens it automatically for me so when I go to do this side it is a little bit flatter already so then I can put another clip in here so I have two clips on the bottom and we are gonna head over to the serger so I'm at the serger I'm gonna line up this section here with my first clip I like to lift up my presser foot a little bit because it's kind of at an angle there we want to make sure that it doesn't get caught and that everything lays nice and flat so I'm gonna tuck that in go ahead and start it a little bit and remove our clip We're going to stitch all the way across and then we're going to flip it over and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to lift up my presser foot a little bit so I can scooch my fabric underneath, stitch a little, go ahead and remove your clip and then we're going to keep going and serge down the bottom. So before I cut these raw pieces of thread, I want to secure them so that way they don't unravel. So I'm going to use Fray Check, which is a liquid sealant, and you're basically just going to put a couple drops on all of the ends. And I usually let them sit overnight a little bit before I will cut them. Um, but once they're they're dry, you can just go ahead and cut them, and the fray check will prevent it from raveling. Now on this top section here, I want it to look a little bit nicer because that is towards the top, so people are going to see it. So in this case, I'm going to work with a double-eyed needle. So a double-eyed needle actually has, rather than having a point, it has two eyes and so what we're going to do is take the end of our thread here and you can just go ahead and pull on the thread we're going to cut this so we have kind of a nice clean edge to work with and then we're going to take that thread and we're going to go ahead and put it through our eye of the needle and then once it's in there, just go ahead and put it a little bit. And then we're going to feed it through underneath these stitches here. So we're going to take the other end of the needle and just physically feed it underneath. And I'm going to do that all the way to the end of this top hem. And then once it gets to this spot, we're going to go ahead and pull it out. And then just kind of pull on it and see how it hides it a little bit now if you want to you can also go ahead and put just a couple drops right there let it dry and then go ahead and clip your threads so we are we now have a finished bag so let's turn it inside out so you can see what it looks like 
so this is what the bag looks like and we have a little bottle I happen to have a little bottle of wine Ooh, as well. Ta -da. Nice. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna stick that in there and then see how, because I've made that bottom, it stands up nicely. This is the spot where it ties. So I'm going to just wrap it around to this side. You can pull it up a little bit and then we can go ahead and give it a nice tie. Of course, my bows aren't the prettiest, but they'll do in a pinch. And then if I want to, you can always just cut it, make it look nice. So there you go, a nice wine bag all set, ready to go.